welcome to this U tutorial. Today we will look at the new published parameters editor introduced in Vue and Plant Factory 2024. While this video has been recorded in Vue, it's also valid for Plant Factory because the workflow and the editor are the same. So you can publish node parameters from node graphs in many different places in the software. For example, for terrains, for clouds or materials, ecosystems, or of course in Plant Factory for plant graphs. And publishing parameters is a really powerful method to create custom interfaces that give access to properties of the node graph in one central place. It makes your workflow quicker and you can share scene files or assets with other users and they can then use the interfaces that you built without having to go into the node graph or understanding how it works. In previous versions, the control we had over the look and feel of published parameters was kind of limited. However, in View and Plant Factory 2024, the new published parameters editor allows extensive customization and reorganization to create any interface you have in mind. So let's explore the editor through a simple function example. I created a new scene and I want to build a material for the ground plane, which can be switched between snow and grass. So in the ground material, let's enter the function editor. In here, I've already set up a few constant color nodes representing snow and two shades of green grass. I want to switch between the white snow color and the dark green grass color. And to do this, I need a blender node to which I connect the snow as input one and the dark green grass as input two. And I'll rename the node to snow or grass. Then I connect the blender to the color output of the material. And now I can use the blending ratio to go from zero, which is full snow, to one, which is full grass. So this is the first control that I want to publish. And I can still do this just like in older versions by left clicking on the name and choosing publish parameter. Next for the grass, I want to have a control to blend between dark grass and dry grass. So I need another blender node to which I connect both colors. And then I can connect this blender node to the first blender node. And the easiest way to do this is by pressing shift and clicking on the existing connection lines to rewire them to the new node. So now that I have this blender node, I want to create patches of dry grass by using a noise as a blending mask. So let's add a noise, for example, a grainy fractal node and connect it to the blending ratio. And because the noise outputs values beyond zero to one, which will produce black spots, I need to clip the noise ratio to zero to one to exclude any of the negative values that fall outside of this blending range. And I'm going to call this node fractal mix. Okay, so now we have a mix between dark green grass and dry grass. And we need another control to blend between the dark green grass only and the fractal mix. So let's add a third blender node and connect the dark green grass to input one, the fractal mix to input two, and then the whole blender node to input two of the snow or grass blender. And finally, let's call this dry grass amount. So to recap, we have two sliders, one for blending between snow and grass and one for blending between green grass and dry grass patches. And that's all for our material function. So now that we have the material set up, we can build a published interface for it. So let's open the Publish Parameters editor from the Panels menu. The editor is divided into three columns. The left column lists all nodes from the graph, including any input nodes. The middle column lists all parameters that were published. And once you select a published parameter, the right column offers controls for changing how the parameter looks in the final interface. And we can already see the slider that we published previously because it's already listed here in the middle column. Now I want to publish the dark green grass color and the dry grass color. And I can do this simply through drag and drop of the color value field from the two nodes. And I also want to publish the blending ratio from the dry grass amount blender node and put it between the two colors. 
and I can unpublish any previously published parameter, by the way, with either the delete icon or with the delete key on the keyboard, or by right-clicking on the parameter in the left column. Now to organize the published interface a little better, I want to create a group with the new group button and call this group material type. And if we wanted to, we could also add a tooltip description to the group. Then I can drag the slider for switching between snow and grass as a child under the group and rename it to select material type. And down here we see a preview of what the parameter will look like in the published interface. Now having a slider in this case is not really ideal because this should be a control that allows switching between full snow and full grass, but without anything in between. But thankfully, the Publish Parameters editor allows you to change the interface type of a published control. And for example, here there are several sliders available to choose from, or you could also turn this into a numerical field. But instead of an UI element that shows a number, we can also just turn the parameter into a checkbox by switching the value type to Boolean, or we can also turn it into an enumeration of values, which is a good choice for our case. So let's go with enumeration. And I want to add two entries. One is called snow and the other one grass. When snow is selected, the blending ratio should be zero so that only the snow input is used. And when grass is selected, it should be one so that only the grass input is used. And rather than using a drop down menu, I think a radio button works better when you have just two choices. And when we look at the Blender node's parameters, we can see that the slider has now turned into a list of radio buttons. And when we switch between the options, then the scene preview shows that these radio buttons work correctly. So let's add another group for the grass parameters by selecting them with shift and clicking the new icon to immediately assign them to the new group. And I'm going to call this group grass settings. Now I want to make some changes to the dry grass amount slider. First, I want to rename this properly. And then I would like to add a percentage unit display to the parameter. A percentage slider usually goes from 0% to 100%. But if I were to change the slider display range from 0 to 100, the parameter would also output a value from 0 to 100. But what we actually need to blend between the two inputs is a value from 0 to 1 for our Blender node. So instead of changing the display range, I can switch the mapping mode from standard to percentage. And now the slider displays 0 to 100 in the UI, but it still outputs 0 to 1 in the graph. And to remove the fractional part, I can check the integer checkbox. Okay, so let's have a look at our final published interface. It looks nice and clean and we can switch between a white snow color or green grass colors with customizable color fields. And we also have a slider for adding patches of dry grass. But with this interface, there's one disadvantage. When snow is selected, all the grass controls have no effect because, well, we just have snow and no grass. But to the user, this is not obvious in the interface because the parameters are still accessible but don't do anything. So it would be a much better user experience if we could gray out these settings when the snow option is selected. So let's go back to the publish parameters editor and let's switch the editor mode from parameter interface to display conditions. In the display conditions mode, all the published parameters are now listed in the left column and we can create conditions for enabling certain parts of the interface only when those conditions are met. And it's important to know that enabling and disabling published parameters through conditions is really a pure usability feature for the final interface, but it has no influence on what happens actually in the graph. And in order for something to happen, you need to build the functionality of enabling or disabling parameters into the logic of your node graph. And fortunately, we already did that through the Blender nodes. If you don't build this logic into the graph, then you will have a nice interface where things get grayed out correctly, but nothing will actually be disabled in the material. Okay, so we want to make the grass controls only available when the material type is set to grass. This means we have to set up a display condition that depends on the state of the material type. 
To do this, I just need to drag the material type parameter into the middle column to create a new condition. And now I can configure the condition. When the material type is equal to grass, then make some other parameters available. And you could also do the opposite and say, well, if the material type is not equal to snow, then make the other parameters available. And this would result in the same thing. However, this is only doing the same thing because we only have two options for the radio buttons. If we had more than two options, not equal would mean not snow, but it could be any of option two or three or four, etc. And this is also why the material type is not grayed out in the left column, even though we already dragged it into the middle column, because you could drag it in the middle column again and create another rule. In fact, you can create as many different rules for the same parameter as you would like. And it's also a good habit to rename the condition to what it actually does so that you can see the display rules of your interface at a glance. So I'll rename this to if material type is equal to grass, then basically enable whatever is below it. So to now make other parameters depend on this condition, I just need to drag them as children below this condition. And when we check the preview of our interface down here, and we switch between snow and grass, the parameters are only accessible when grass is selected. Now I want to go one step further and look at the dry grass color. When dry grass amount is set to zero, no dry grass is present in the material and then it makes no sense to have the dry grass color available in this case. So let's create another display condition, but this time for the dry grass amount. And here we want to configure a condition that says if dry grass amount is bigger than 0%, make the other parameters available. And of course, I'll rename the condition once again. Now I can drag the dry grass color a second time into the middle column, but this time as a child of the dry grass amount condition. And this means that this parameter now depends on two conditions. It depends on what is selected as a material type and on whether the dry grass amount slider is bigger than 0%. And if I now select the dry grass parameter, I can choose how these two conditions on which it depends should be combined. By default, the combining operator is OR, which means that only one of the two conditions needs to be true. And we can test this by setting the dry grass amount to a larger value than 0% and then switch the material type to snow. The dry grass color is still accessible even though snow is selected because dry grass amount is larger than 0% and because only one of these two conditions must be fulfilled, this is enough to make the parameter available. So in our case, we need to switch the operator to AND, which requires that both conditions must be true. And now that we switched it to end, it works as expected. The color is always grayed out in snow mode. And when grass is selected, it is only available when dry grass amount is larger than 0%. So you might already see that the system is incredibly powerful, but it can also get a bit complex the more parameters you have in your published interface, especially because you can create a display condition for a parameter and make that same parameter depend on another parameter's condition at the same time, as it is the case here with the dry grass amount. Again, the dry grass amount has both a display condition set up to control something else, and at the same time, it depends on the display condition of the material type. So I highly, highly recommend sticking to the habit of naming your display conditions accordingly to keep this list manageable. And now let's look at our finished interface in all of its glory and try it. And as we can see, it works perfectly and all parameters are only accessible when it makes sense. One thing I would like to point out is the use of drop-down menus, radio buttons or Boolean checkboxes as separate nodes in the graph. It is often handy to still have radio buttons or drop-down menus or checkboxes within the graph, but without the need to publish them especially if you eventually don't even want to publish those parameters to the final interface at all, but you still need them while working in the graph to quickly switch between different modes. And this is why two legacy nodes from previous versions have remained, the value from list node and the boolean number node. 
And these two nodes create checkboxes or enumerations as a separate node in the graph. And again, this is useful for getting access to these UI elements permanently without even having to publish a parameter just for this. And when we do publish these two parameters and check them in the Publish Parameters editor, we will see that we cannot configure them in the editor at all. This is because any configuration directly in the editor would be for display purposes only in the published interface and would only be temporary while that parameter remains published. But here these elements are separate nodes which are a permanent part of the graph. So to change the true and false values of a checkbox, you have to do this inside of the node. And the same applies to editing the entries for the drop-down menu. For this, click on the drop-down's name and choose Edit Widget Options. Here you can add new entries and choose between drop-down and radio buttons. Once you've added those entries, you can then assign the values to each entry and you could even control each value with other nodes in the graph something that would not be possible by just turning any arbitrary UI element temporarily into a enumeration during publishing. So if you ever encounter a scene file where you cannot edit the dropdown or radio buttons or checkboxes in the published parameters editor, it means that any of these two nodes were used for this element and you need to make the changes directly in the node settings. And finally, there's one neat feature where it's particularly useful to have a Boolean number node separately in the graph. Let's publish the Boolean checkbox and go to the Published Parameters editor. Now we'll create a new group and drag the Boolean checkbox as a child under this group. And when we look at the Boolean settings, there's an option that says Merge with Group. If you check this option, the checkbox will be appearing at the beginning of the group frame, so right next to the group headline. And this allows you to turn the whole group on and off. When the group is disabled, all parameters of that group get grayed out, and that's without the need to set up a specific display condition for each of those parameters. I hope this tutorial sparked your interest in experimenting with the Published Parameters Editor in Vue and Plant Factory 2024, because it really is a very capable interface creation system. If you want to see what can be achieved with this editor, you can check out the new Smart Cloud materials from this release and see how the interface was made. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.